Uh, here we are now in the um, sprinkler control pump room. Brian, behind us is that enormous black tank. Uh, what's that for? That actually holds the water that when the sprinkler does go into an emergency situation, that is the, s the supply for all the sprinkler system right through the building. Mm -hmm. And I, I forget exactly, but it's thousands of gallons that's in there. And this pump in here will kick into action? That pump kicks in, which feeds the w pumps the water from that tank right through the sprinkler system, which runs obviously right through the building. Yeah. Quite honestly, at the moment, in a fire situation in this building, you've got more chance of drowning than you end up getting burnt, to be honest. <laughs> well, I mean, there's so much concrete, presumably that's going to be resistant for fire anyway. Indeed. Well, concrete, actually, I have seen videos of concrete burning. It does, it, it, when it gets hot enough, it does burn quite well. But if you remember back in the uh, late 60s and early 70s, we were told that aura glass didn't burn either. Mm. But unfortunately, it, it did. did. I notice um, almost an over-provision, if you like, of <laughs> fire doors and fire escapes. Presumably, there's a huge sensitivity during the rebuild that there would be every provision for getting out of the building quickly. Oh, absolutely. It was priority. That's one of the reasons why the original summer, summer land wasn't built as it was originally, because quite frankly, the amount of money that was poured into putting the fire eggs in place and the fact that the corporation, I think, had it underinsured a little bit. But most, literally half the money that went into the new building was taken up on fire eggs, fire precautions, yeah. fire exits and making it safe. And that's had a, an effect all the way along the promenade, of course, with all the hotels since then having to have fire doors and their banisters uh, f filled in and everything. Absolutely. Well, you're, you've been involved in the hotel business yourself, Charles. I'm mm. sure you remember that up to then, fire regulations in hotels were very flimsy, to say the least. Since Summerland fired, if nothing else, although at, at the expense of 53 people's lives, the fire eggs were certainly tightened up an awful lot. And of course it came at a time which is very difficult for many hoteliers. I remember attending a court case with the hotelier in tears because she couldn't afford it and she was going to be closed down unless she did all this work. Indeed, but I think didn't the government come in with some sort of grant scheme Indeed. eventually mm -hmm. that, that helped people. But this, uh, people forget it, it's like when, the, when someone went on fire. I remember a, a lady called Kathy Brady came back here a few years ago now and she asked to see the, uh, she actually asked to see the pizza level, but it was obviously the piazza level. Um, and w could she go and have a look at it? And she looked a bit, her eyes were red and bloodshot. I actually thought she might have had a couple of drinks or something, but after about an hour I went looking for her. She was upstairs, she was sat at a table. It was the middle of winter. The only thing we had running was the cinema. And she was sat at a table, obviously sobbing. So I went across and asked if she was all right. And it turned out that she'd lost her mother, father, and her elder brother, it was just her and her younger brother that were left out of the fire. And I sat talking to her for about an hour, explaining a little bit about what I remember of the fire. But she said herself, and it's, it's true actually, because in them days, there was no counselling, no nothing. People after the fire were literally told, very sorry, yeah. go away, get on with your life. Mm. So yeah, that, that lady, I, I got a lovely letter from her actually thanking me for all the help and stuff, but it certainly woke, made me stop and think about mm. how things were. 30 years ago with counselling and stuff like that. It's, it's not that way now, but it took her, that was the 25th anniversary, if that's the right word to use, off the fire, when she came back and it had taken her 25 years to pluck up the courage to come back there just to have a look where her parents got killed and her brother, as I say. So yeah, there's, there's lots of, um, that's the sadder part of the whole building. One would imagine you might see ghosts around here. Well, there are plenty of ghosts. Because, as you well remember, most of the people that died were died in fire exits, ironically enough. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when they actually got to the doors, there was padlocks and chains on them. Because yeah. it happened, if you remember, Charles, there was a big one in Dublin about three months later, where a bunch of kids got burned in a disco with very similar circumstances. When they went out of the fire exits, they were all padlocked and chained. So, yes, there's plenty of ghosts, but as they say, ghosts aren't bad people, they're just ghosts. So. There, there are places in this building when you do walk around, and I, I, if you talk to, to Bobby Klein and one or two other the old boys that's been here a while, you do get a sort of a spooky kind of a feeling sometimes. Because this, this level is as it was in the original Summerland down here, obviously. It's only the piazza level and then on up that's changed. Was there a sprinkler system in the original building? No. No, no because uh, the architect at the time who I still believe, I believe is still on his yacht down in the Mediterranean. Yes, <laughs> That's the man. Yeah. Said uh, there's no need, it just concrete doesn't burn and aura glass doesn't burn. Mm. And two years after he said that, of course, mm. we know what happened. Not the sort of thing you say. No.